Right, my name is Dong Kim. I'm the Director of Application Engineering at New Wave. Uh, I'm sure that you guys have heard our CEO's keynote speech this morning. Uh, we are a uh, system integrator for federal government. Uh, we work mainly for Centers for Medicaid, uh, Medicare and Medicaid Services. So CMS is a unique pair in a way that they serve uh, 60 million Medicare beneficiaries and then seven, over 75 million Medicare, I'm sorry, Medicaid beneficiaries. So if you combine the numbers together, there are about 135 million Americans that uh, CMS is serving. Um, we are, into, we are uh, providing 11 uh, prime contracts within CMS. We are into seven of their eight centers. Uh, our you know, uh, contract value currently is about $600 million. So we are doing a lot of work for CMS. And uh, the talk today is about uh, the work that we're doing for CMMI. As you have heard this morning, CMMI and I stands for innovation. We're creating a really cool data management uh, platform for uh, CMMI to be able to collect or ingest data from different data sources and then be able to aggregate the data and then provide a visualization and then BI on top of the data sets that they have. So uh, we're gonna get more into detail about those. Yep. Hey everybody, my name is Aaron Wilkowitz. I'm the sales engineer for Looker, uh, specializing in the federal practice. Um, so I've been working with, had the pleasure of working with New Wave for, for uh, over a year now. Patrick covered a lot of these details in the keynote earlier today, but the scale of the effort that New Wave is undertaking in improving and revolutionizing healthcare uh, across the country is a, is a really massive one at the federal level. Uh, you know, 25% of all of our uh, taxpayer dollars go to Medicare and Medicaid every single year, so that's you know, almost $400 billion a year that's going to those two services. And you know, similarly, one in four Americans uh, are receiving uh, either Medicare or Medicaid benefits, right? and it's typically the most vulnerable across, uh, across you know, our, our, our citizens. So it's, it's really important effort that we're undertaking. Um, and, I, and I would say that the innovation effort in particular, just innovating in healthcare and within CMS, uh, you know, gets a billion, almost a billion dollars a year in, in, uh, in revenue, uh, or, or you know, in funding. Uh, and similarly, there are about a million practitioners across the country that are working on these efforts. So it's it just, in terms of scale, it is a massive thing uh, that, that New Wave is working on with CMS. Yeah, simple fact check, it's $800 billion per year. <laughs> Never mind, $800 billion. <laughs> I was off by, by a factor of two. Uh, anyway. So, so uh, we, 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 you guys saw that clip of President Obama signing the Affordable Care Act. Uh, and, and really, that, that signified a switch from value-based care, or I'm sorry, from fee-for-service care to value-based care. So for a very long time, the way that healthcare has worked is that you know, uh, when you go to the doctor to get a prescription or to get a procedure or a surgery or anything, right, the, the doctor is reimbursed based on the service that they provide. Right? Uh, and the problem with that is that it incentivizes doctors and hospital administrators and hospital systems to provide more services, not necessarily better care. Right, and the switch to value-based care is really focused on uh, trying to make care more efficient and getting to better outcomes while also uh, having fewer overall procedures and surgeries. So really for the first time, doctors are being held accountable for performance. And that performance is not some kind of nebulous idea. Right? It's a very data-driven concept. It's something where you can actually track how quickly are patients getting better, how quickly are, uh, you know, are they achieving certain outcomes, and how much money are they, are they spending in order to get to those outcomes? How many procedures or diagnoses or uh, prescriptions are, are, are occurring for that to happen? Yeah, so when Aaron said that providers are in the hook to provide better health care for uh, beneficiaries, uh, the, the measures or uh, you know, how they are measured for each of the models has a direct correlations uh, to how much they are paid. So it's in their best interest to make sure that they are checking every uh, you know measures and you know KPIs to make sure that they are delivering uh, value-based healthcare to their beneficiaries. So th th this change in healthcare is so massive and so revolutionary that all of the hospital financial systems, all of the hospital administrative systems that have existed in the past, were made for this fee-for-service system. So now that we're completely changing the script on how uh, you know doctors and hospital systems are being reimbursed on this. As you might imagine, there are a lot of different ways that you might go about reimbursing for performance. Right? And that's, that's really the goal of these alternate pair models, or APMs, uh, that CMS is generating. Right? A lot of the innovation uh, that, that is going on here is deciding what are all the different experiments and laboratories and different combinations and variations of, of ways to reimburse for healthcare should we be investigating into. Right? So I mean, ju just as one example, uh, the, the very first 
APM uh, that New Wave is, is working to launch with CMS is called CPC Plus. It's the Comprehensive Primary Care Plus program. Uh, and the goal is to take primary care doctors and figure out which ones are providing efficient care, which ones are providing less efficient care. Right? There are other uh, payer models and other payment systems that are more based at the hospital level, right? where you might provide, for example, all of the funding to a hospital for the entire year. And then it's up to them to provide the most efficient care. Right? So there's a lot of different ways you can slice and dice how you would provide reimbursements. And that's really the goal of this APM approach. Correct. And when we talk about advanced payment model, um, the model consists of different KPIs and measures, right? So, you know, how many of you here drink Starbucks coffee? Nice. Okay. So, uh, analogy that we've been giving is that before Starbucks, you know, when they create a drink, right, they want to test it out regionally, and then if it's successful, they want to push it out nationally. Do you, guys, do you guys know that? So it's the same concept. You know, model consists of different KPIs and measures, measures. And CMMI, they collect the data and they make sure that certain models are performing well before they uh, you know, push it out to national uh, you know, uh, practices. Absolutely. So you, you've got all these different payer models, all these different systems across the country that are looking at very, very similar data-driven KPIs. Right? And so the, the kind of metaphor that I think of is that the private sector has already solved this problem. The private sector has all of these similar data sets, these similar applications, like Salesforce, like the Google suite of applications, right? like Zendesk and so many others. And the way that, you know, that, that uh, Looker is helping the private sector with all of these common data sets is with blocks. Right? So you've got a common data schema, and Looker can create a block on top of that and provide analytics and insights to people so that it's not like if client A starts to use Salesforce, suddenly if client B does the same thing, they've got to start all over. Instead, you've got, uh, you've got a, a LookML model that you can use as the basis and foundation of your analysis. Right? And, and the goal of what we're doing with New Wave is to take that same principle that's been working in the private sector for half a decade now and apply that solution to the public sector. Right? And the, the goal is that at the end of that vision, right, you be able to provide a new APM with analytics in a matter of minutes rather than months. Because right? in the current process, it's taking months and even years for CMS to provide new analytics to an APM. And the goal is, you know, with, the with nearly the touch of a button, right, you can provide that same level of analytics uh, you know, to, to an APM. And we really think of that scale in a few different ways. There's, there's horizontal scale. And, you know, for example, you, know, you have a Salesforce app and a Google app and a Zendesk app, right? Similarly, there, there are different data warehouses and data sets that everyone in healthcare is looking at in the same way. So there's a horizontal scale where everyone is leveraging the same data set. There is a vertical scale because once you've created that application or that data system or that LookML model for a single data set for one APM, you can replicate it and extend that logic to other APMs. And there's also a scale of depth. Because now if your analysts are no longer spending their time on data transformations and these, these sort of light transformations that are happening, they can instead focus on machine learning and artificial intelligence and really getting to deeper predictive questions with healthcare and ultimately more important questions to answer. Uh, as you might imagine, with something of this kind of scale, this is not without challenges. Perhaps the, the biggest challenge is the scale in of itself, right? I mean, as Patrick mentioned earlier today, there are billions of healthcare uh, claims, and CMS is sitting on one of the largest data sets in the world. And, and we're not just running select statements, right? Like, th there are very complex joins that are happening uh, across very uh, detailed uh, healthcare KPIs, and, and we'll get into a couple of examples uh, in just a second. The other thing that makes it complex is that it's not just uh, healthcare, which obviously has PHI, PII data, very sensitive data, but it's federal healthcare. Right, so there are all sorts of compliance and regulation issues uh, that, that, that Dongwa could speak to at length. Uh, but suffice it to say that there is a, an incredible amount of regulatory hurdles that we have to overcome. Uh, and I'd also say just the, the scale of the project in terms of the number of pair models. Right now we're, we're working on about four, but pretty quickly we'll be in the hundreds and potentially you know, one day thousands of, of these different experiments. So it's a tremendous amount of scale, complexity. It has to be right, uh, which all makes it quite difficult. Yeah, I mean, talking about the, uh, the complexity of the data set, we're collecting over 2 billion data points per year just on Medicare alone. So if you multiply that by two, you know, twice, you know, we're collecting about 4 to 5 billion uh, data points per year coming from different data sources and different data types. Yeah, so uh, one of the advantages of being a speaker is that I get to ask you questions. So raise your hand if you're in healthcare. Okay, great. Raise your hand if you're looking for a new job. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> so, you know, we're hiring, so, you know, come see us uh, after the talk. Um, 
so this is an uh, architecture of how we implemented our solution in CMMI. If you look at, if you look at the right-hand side, we have a data as a service layer. Uh, of course, we're using Looker to do data modeling. Uh, we are using Dremio. Uh, it's a virtual data uh, layer. It allows us to pull data from different data sources within CMS and also from other data sources, right? You know, it doesn't matter whether you're pulling data from relational database, NoSQL, flat files, a parquet, CSV, JSON, you name it. This allows uh, data analysts and BAs to work together and find out what kind of data sets they have. And then, uh, you know, providing that uh, data governance so that People, only people who should have access to the data set will have access, but you know, not losing the agility of having access to the data is really important. So Adremio is serving that purpose, and once we have done data modeling, I mean, SQL to me is just a new API, right? SQL is common language across different data warehouses. We can take the same data model, and then we can move it onto Snowflake. So on the left-hand side is uh, where our production uh, BI and analytics uh, runs. Uh, we are using Snowflake to do that. And of course, we're using Looker on top of Snowflake to use it as an API layer. Uh, I mean, you know, Looker has the visualization, but their API capability is so advanced that it allows to be so agile in a way for us to come up with different data apps. It has served the, the purpose really well. For example, uh, CMS wanted us to implement uh, their dashboard that they have done in um, MicroStrategy. Are you familiar with MicroStrategy? Okay, all right, you're shaking your head. So, and then, you know, they wanted, like pixel perfect to be the same as the, uh, the same uh, dashboard that they had. We were able to do that uh, using their uh, Looker's API, and then we put a custom UI on top of it. So if you look at it, it looks the, the same, right? But you know, under the cover, it's totally different engine that you have. Yeah, just, just one other point I would make there is that, you know, I, I'm sure many of you are in Silicon Valley or in tech forward uh, companies, right? What I would say is that you know, this probably looks pretty familiar to the kind of stacks that you guys are working with today. In the federal government, this is revolutionary, right? The federal government is typically five, 10, 20 years behind in terms of the overall stack that's being created. So even if this looks familiar to you, I assure you that you know, with other federal engagements, this is not the kind of advanced uh, stack and modern stack that we're working with. So it's been great to work with New Wave on that. So I mean, this is the uh, uh, you know replica that we created uh, that was built on top of MicroStrategy, but then we put a custom UI layer on top of Looker's API. I mean, Looker provides LookML, which is really great for uh, data modeling, right? Uh, you know, it provides that it hides all the complexity of SQL, but that enable your development team to contribute each other or collaborate on uh, you know data modeling. And you know, once you build that data model, you can use the same data model, whether it's using Looker's uh, native UI or uh, you know, having access to the data, uh, data results that's coming back from API. So we were able to build this uh, replica within two weeks. So I think that's pretty impressive, right? And one advantage of us doing this is that federal government, within the federal government, there are a lot of compliances that you have to go through before you are able to push your code out into production. One of the uh, compliance that you have to pass through is 508 uh, testing. So, you know, as you know, 508 compliance is for people who are uh, with, uh, you know, eyesight disabilities. And by using this technique, we were able to uh, pass through 508 compliance testing with 100% um, uh, passing score. Absolutely. And our, our, I would say our goal uh, uh, across next year is to get more of this, uh, more of this UI into Looker. Uh, but that said, I, I think that. Uh, the federal government at times can be, uh, you know, it can take time, right, to convince them to change from, you know, a dashboard that they've been used to to, to to something more modern. So it's been great to, to make the kind of back-end engine of this much more modern over the last few months, and we look forward to continuing to work together on making yeah, I mean, to them, modern. this is sexy, so. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Cool. So th there are just a couple other uh, kind of interesting items that, that, that we worked on with New Wave that might be of interest to folks who are, uh, you know, more familiar with, with the LookML layer, uh, and in particular with, with healthcare and the LookML layer. Uh, th this is just an example uh, KPI that, that, that we built out with New Wave. There are about 60 of these KPIs, and one thing that's interesting is that in the analytics that they want to do, they want to see, you know, this quarter and last quarter percent change over last quarter and rolling 12 months. So those, those 60 KPIs can pretty quickly turn into, you know, hundreds if not thousands of derivations of those 60 KPIs. But this is just one example of them. This is sort of the, the total acute medical and patient expenditures. Uh, so you're basically taking a K-12 
calculation of a number of different columns, uh, the sum of, of that kind of pre-calculation, uh, and then you're kind of filtering down to just medical expenditures, and then filtering down to just the acute expenditures. Right, so just one very basic example of a KPI. Imagine 60 of these, and then imagine times 20 derivations extended across you know, at least four APMs for now, and then eventually many hundreds more. The model quickly gets complex, but one thing that's nice about LookML is that you have that reusability and that extensibility. And then one other uh, point we wanted to go through is that you know, unit testing is something that came out in Looker 6 uh, you know, a few months ago. Uh, there is a requirement uh, you know, from, from the federal government that every line of code must be unit tested. Uh, and so it, it was pretty good timing that, that, that our unit testing, you know, has come out uh, in 2019. Um, so just to give a, a very basic sense of how we did this unit testing, we could have a whole session just on this, but, but a very quick sense of, of what the, the team did to build out this unit testing. They essentially took a KPI, just like the one we saw on the other slide, and they took uh, a very simple spreadsheet. So, right, so you can see in the, in the top left, there's a very simple spreadsheet with just the three or four columns that, that any KPI would need. And you're not trying to make a very long data set. Instead, you're trying to make the shortest data set that you could that would allow you to make sure that the calculations are working. And then they actually manually calculated what the answer should be. Right, so you've got the four or five columns you need in a spreadsheet. You've got the five or six rows of test data that you might need that they manually created. They manually calculate the answer. And then in LookML, they are extending the base model and then they're building a unit test on top of it, right? So they extend the base model, and then in the, uh, if you look at that number two right there, you see that there's an assertion, right? So the assertion says, when we, when we use this uh, spreadsheet, we better get to, you know, 264, right? That, that's what it's testing for, and it's making sure, hey, if I go to that spreadsheet, it's gonna t say 264, and then in Looker, you can test it and make sure that your KPI is working. And what's great is if we ever change the logic in the base model, this test will fail. Right, so it means that we have, there, there's always another check, there's always another validation. Uh, and, and you know, I, I think we did this out of necessity because of the regulations that we faced, but I think it ended up being a very useful tool and one that I recommend to anybody building a LookML model. And then you know, what, what's next, you know, we're gonna continue scaling out. Right? So we uh, you know, are working on four pair models right now that are gonna launch over the next few months, but eventually it'll get to dozens and, and many more than just dozens of, of exactly. pair models. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if you think federal government is boring, uh, you're wrong. <laughs> I mean, uh, CMS, they are rolling out uh, uh, different capabilities such as artificial intelligence. So uh, providers will be able to see some of the AI models within the same dashboard that you're looking into now. So that's coming in year 2020. Um, we're doing a lot of data science work here. Uh, you know, we're doing something that's very innovative with the latest uh, cutting, tech, uh, cutting edge technology such as you know, Looker and Snowflake and Databricks. So uh, the federal government is changing, especially within healthcare space. So I really encourage you to you know, look out and see what's out there. <laughs>